So here we are at part two of our Willie's restoration. And if you missed part one, we got it running, we got it stopping, we sorted out some other stuff, and now we're underneath the Jeep. So here we are at the rear axle. There were a couple surprises and you're gonna find this all the time with old Jeeps. This Jeep hadn't been driven in a lot of years. We popped the diff cover, found the rear diff was full, the gears were full of rust and pitting. Wanted to go ahead and replace it so we didn't have howling. So we did rebuild the rear end of the Jeep, uh, new bearings, and we did the brakes. And we're gonna show you the other little treasures we found during our Willys restoration. So here we are under the transfer case of the Jeep. You can see that we ended up rebuilding the parking brake, the yoke. The transfer case was full of water, so it needed a full rebuild. Transmission was pretty much the same way. We resurfaced the clutch. We did a new clutch kit from Kaiser Willys. Sorry, we resurfaced the flywheel. Uh, new case bearings in the front, rebuilt the front drive shaft, scrub seals. All of that's just gonna make it a really nice driver. So why don't we get this Jeep back on the ground, get it inside, and we'll go over the last couple things we did to wrap it up. So here we are, Jeep's back on the ground and in the shop. So you've seen, we've done the brakes, we've done the drivetrain, we've done the clutch, transfer case, axles, the Jeep kind of snowballed a little bit, but that's what you run into with a vintage Jeep. You can't always think it's gonna be black and white. I mean, there are always surprises in 70 year old vehicles. So this family who's owned this Jeep since new wanted reliability. And in my mind, reliability comes with a nice wiring system. Uh, Uncle Bob wired my Jeep back in the 70s is not a good wiring system. Scotch locks and butt connectors, no, we don't trust those. So we ordered the Kaiser Willys wiring kit, all comes pre-done, pre-loomed. It's kind of a plug and play, it's a really nice kit, cloth, cloth over uh, copper. They do the correct looms up front. What you can't see is the new headlight uh, plugs, the running light bulb sockets. We also opted for the 12 volt conversion. Again, it's a reliability thing for this family. So you can see the alternator uh, with the 12 volt conversion. Uh, you also get a volts meter and you remove the amp meter that was part of the six volt system. One of the big things I really wanna tell everybody to do is make sure you build good battery cables. Do not trust your crusty old battery cables because you spend all this time wiring the Jeep. That's great. And you got these crappy old battery cables. Also do your grounds. Make sure your block and your body are grounded. We put new sending units in the motor. Sending units need a ground. They ground through the block. The block has to ground through the chassis. Chassis has to ground through the body. The gauges read the ground. So grounds are on any Jeep vehicle whatsoever. It's always the ground. That's a huge joke in the shop. Grounds, 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 grounds. That pretty much wraps up the wiring, the drivetrain. Mechanically, I'm stoked. It works great. Family's gonna enjoy it for years and years to come. So wrapping up this little Willie's build, we're gonna talk about the last couple of things the owner wanted done to the Jeep in order to make it nicer for him and his family. A Couple of the things we did was we did new seats, covers, we did a new steering wheel. It was pretty cracked up and nasty. We did a new horn button. We did the interior lights. We got the little light working on top of the gauges. Uh, one of the things I wanna point out is the fuel tank. Always replace your fuel tank. Don't risk garbage running through your motor. Just, they're cheap. Buy them, put a new fuel cinder in it. You can see the new cap and grommet. New motors, old motors, no motors like sludge. So just replace it. Uh, one of my favorite things that I will go over is the owner let me do is he let me keep the standard single rear taillight. That's really cool. That's the way the Jeep came from the factory. That's all it's required by law is to have what it had from the factory. You don't have to do duels. One works and it's really cool. We did do a new piece of windshield glass. It was cracked. We have a back seat on the way for the grandkids to ride in with some canvas for that. And that pretty much wraps up what ended up being a really large build. Um, it kind of was more than me or the owners thought it would be uh, with all the axle stuff and all that that we didn't anticipate, but that's the Jeep life. I mean, you guys that are doing this, anticipate it, it could happen, yours could be perfect. 
But if you're a Jeep guy and you're watching this, then you're shaking your head because you totally understand what I'm talking about. I would like to give a big shout out to Mike at Kaiser Willys. Every part that we've done in these videos came from Kaiser Willys, aside from the seat covers and the tires. Uh, their parts are amazing. Mike's a great guy. KaiserWillys.com, give him a shout out. And I wanted to thank you guys for watching the video. TheJeepFarm.com, thank you very much and thanks for watching the video.